Welcome to this E3 complete unnecessary podcast. We're live at E3. Yeah. No, we're not. Look at us. We're, we're 100 miles away. <laughs> it's a, it's the podcast. It's June 13th. It's a Thursday. Rare Thursday recording 2019. That's Ian Ferguson on Pat Country. This will be our... We usually do an E3 kind of special. There's so much going on to cover. We were, we were recording this week anyway, but we decided to delay it a couple of days. But we're talking about... Uh, Nintendo. Nintendo. Microsoft. We're talking about... Uh, the Hyperkin uh, N64 uh, HD clone, Turbo Graphics Mini, limited run games, a Star Wars arcade announced, and a little bit more. Uh, real quick before we dive in, game six tonight. Yeah. Warriors versus Toronto. Ian's going for Toronto. I'm going for the Warriors. Um, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. It's, Ian, it's, it's, Ian it's put his be good. Ian put his curse on them on, on Toronto. <laughs> so if they lose. Every team I like is cursed. Every every team you like is cursed. And then the, the Blues won the Stanley Cup Finals, which I did not watch one game of the NHL playoffs. That's I'm, I should be ashamed of my street hockey self. Yeah, I I, I haven't myself. either. I've been uh I've been using um been using uh, streams of dubious legality <laughs> to to watch basketball. But um, yeah, I didn't I didn't turn in tune in for any hockey this year. Um, hockey, I've said it on here before, I'm sure though. Hockey is one of those sports that really I only I, I love watching it live. I don't like watching it on TV. Um, I have an incredibly hard time following it on TV. Really? Yeah. I, I like following hockey. It's like a video game to me. I can actually follow the strategy on hockey. Going back to my street hockey days. Unlike NBA, you can kind of follow the NBA. Anyway, so uh, E3. I would just say this about E3 this year in terms of the coverage. Did it seem like people were like going out of their way to be overhyped about E3 this year more than past years to me? Like, they, they, I think going out of the way to be more excited about things? No, I don't or think this, so. Or is this a typical mood? Or am, no, I getting, I mean, am, am I getting old and curmudgeon I think you're getting it? old and curmudgeon It just seemed like there was a lot of stuff where people were losing their minds more. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but... Honestly, I, it was a good E3. It, there was a lot of good stuff to see. No one really disappointed. Did, did anyone win E3? I don't you know. I know. Um, they win the, the prize but winning E3? Um, yeah. yeah uh, E3. Oh, <laughs> um, it, it, it was a better E3 than last year and the year before. There was actually stuff people wanted to see. Last year, no one wanted to see anything? I think last year was pretty lackluster. Last year was that E3 where everyone was like, Okay, it's the end of this generation and nothing's coming. I remember no one was particularly enthused about. But it's, it's even more the end of the generation. Yeah, I mean, but Sony the, Sony wasn't even there this year. Yeah, but Nintendo announced a lot of stuff. Microsoft did, Bethesda did, Square did a lot of it for this generation, which we'll get into. Um, so no, I, I don't think people were overdoing it, and honestly, I'd rather people were excited, more excited about stuff than just shitting on it all the time. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know seemed 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 reasonable it seemed reasonable enthusiasm levels seemed reasonable are you going to go next year are we going to do a live podcast from there next, next year we can set up no if there was ever an e3 that would have made sense for us to go to i think it would have been this one but i've never gone i don't ever want to i've had the opportunity for over a decade this now. would have been the one to go to really i think so not not the, like when the switch was coming out i, I mean no? this this would have been a good one to go to this would have been a good one what did Bethesda show? I I, I didn't even look. I, I I watched the uh, Microsoft one, most of Nintendo Direct. Uh, big thing was Bethesda showed off Doom Eternal. Um, I believe they also talked about Elsewhere. Um, oh, Death Loop. Now my brain is frying. I don't recall. Um, they talked about more updates for Fallout seventy six, and uh, I think. New multiplayer stuff for Rage 2. Basically, they announced a bunch of stuff that's important to the people who like their shit. Oh, okay. I would I would hope so. Yeah. Okay. And, and Square was kind of the same thing. Square's doing a bunch of... Um, Square is doing a bunch of uh, remasters and re-releases of games. Um, the, the big one was Secret of Mana Collection. Mm -hmm. um, that has the original Game Boy game, uh, the Super Nintendo... Uh, Secret of Mana, and then uh, Saiken Densetsu 3, which was never released over here. Um, and they translated it for the collection, and they announced it during the Nintendo Direct, and then they were like, oh, by the way, it's out on the eShop now, so go get it. Okay. Uh, that's a pretty big drop, because like I said, it's never been officially brought mm -hmm. over here. 
Um, and I think they're doing that in preparation for, it looks like they are launching a uh, remake of the third uh, Secret of Mana um, for the Switch next year. So, so that's okay. I, I never was into that series, but well, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Did uh, did Ubisoft release details of the Assassin's Creed Neanderthal Times uh, game coming out? Got to be honest with you, if there was one thing I didn't really pay attention to, it was Ubisoft. Ubisoft, Watch Dogs Legion is that their big one this year? Because you play, you can play as a grandma killing people. Probably. That, that's that's the news. Like, oh, you can play as an old woman. <laughs> it's like okay, that that's interesting. Uh, so. And John and John Bernthal was was on stage for uh, Ubisoft. It looks like for Ghost Recon. I guess he's a oh, good okay. old Punisher. Is doing that. So let's jump on into uh, to Nintendo, huh? Yeah. Okay. So Nintendo showed off quite a bit this year. Um, this I, I think this was a particularly good year for Nintendo. Um, good vintage. I would say uh, some of the more notable stuff, and I'll um, start with uh, Link's Awakening. Um, they showed a, another extended trailer for Link's Awakening on the Switch. Um, that was the Zelda that came out on the Game Boy originally, and then it had a Game Boy Color port. Um, so the one for and this... This is a top-down Zelda game. Yep. Traditional Zelda game. Yep, traditional top-down Zelda. Um, they showed it off just a little bit further along. The graphics look nice. Um, it was really cute to see, at least for someone like me who, who loves that one, to see like some of the scenes redone like just to see how they're gonna look like sure. the stupid raccoon and shit like that so i never played it so i'm actually looking forward <laughs> oh, to this it's so good vani's looking forward to it too because I, I like top down zelda games that's what i grew up with i like link to the past obviously I like legend of zelda so this is easily the best of them oh so hot take from ian I, okay nope, nope. That's not hot at That's all. That's a hot opinion. That is just fact. It's, it's just fact. That's uh, fact. Uh, objectively true. <laughs> objectively true. Um, and they showed off, though, uh, quickly one thing that's very, very cool. I think that they did not. Um, it was never in the original. So in this one, you can collect dungeon rooms. You can, ah, you can collect I did see that, yeah. dungeon rooms, and you can link together your own dungeons. You can link? So you can do your own run-through of a dungeon that you decide where you place all the rooms and everything. Yeah, I, uh, it looks like they, it, at least the one they showed, it was in like a heart shape, and I think they called them something like heart dungeons. I could be wrong. So I don't know if they're always going to be that shape, but yeah, you basically can unlock all sorts of tiles and pieces to That's, make your own dungeon. Instead of like just puzzle pieces or bullshit, then you can do a run-through and get like items and extra shit. Yeah. That's a really cool way to... To uh, if you if you if you played it before, obviously you still want to play a remastered version because it, it has what it would call like cute toy graphics. That's how you describe sure. it. Um, and and now they add on a, a, a unique element that we haven't seen before, where um, that'll keep it that'll keep it fresh at least. So it's a, a side game almost. Yeah. Now it'd be nice if Nintendo allowed people to share those with their friends, but I have a feeling Nintendo. I was going to bring it up. Way. I was going to bring it up. I have a feeling we're Nintendo still sore will find a it. way to not let We're still sore about that. that. I would think that that'd be a way to save it and share it with your friends. Yeah, Ian. Well, yeah but I, 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 nothing, a little less. nothing can be assumed with Nintendo. It's a little, a little less uh, arduous on the Switch uh, melting potentially when you're just sharing a, a little dungeon versus the, the multiplayer. I guess. I don't know. No, I'm, not, I'm not trying to carry Nintendo's water here on their Mario Maker 2. They mentioned Mario Maker 2 on the, the Nintendo Yeah, Direct? briefly, but that's because it comes out like next week. Okay. They've, they've already said all they, they I missed can the first. I actually missed the first. I watched Nintendo. I missed like the first 10 minutes, so I, I, missed, I missed the Link's Awakening uh, uh, on it. It's so good. And if you didn't know Link's Awakening, they, 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 unlike Mega Man, they switch it up a bit. They go to an island, and, and you're not just, you know, you know, rescuing Zelda and stuff. It's, in, it's interesting. Okay. It's, it's different. It's not, not the. Not to decry Mega Man just re redoing the same plot thirty five times. Focus onward. Sorry. So, <laughs> what? Uh, the, uh, they announced two collections that were actually released that day. I love it when N Nintendo always does something like that. I love it when yeah. Nintendo brings like says talks about something and then they're like, oh, you can get it right now. That's happening more in the industry though. Yeah, they're keeping things under wraps and be like, oh, it's out. Nintendo's been good about not announcing stuff until it's within reach of release or just being like, here's something. So real quick, it was the Mana Collection I mentioned earlier. Um, first Secret of Mana on the Game Boy, um, Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo, and then the third Secret of Mana, which had never come out here, gets the translation that's out now. And then the Contra so, Collection. So Secret of Mana three that was was that a, that was a Super Nintendo release in Japan? Yes. Super Famicom. Yep. Okay. And then uh, the Contra Collection is out real quick, going over what it has. It has, um, it's a good collection so far as I can tell. Uh, Arcade Contra and Super Contra, Nintendo Contra, 
Nintendo Super C, um, Operation C for the Game Boy, okay. uh, Contra 3 Alien Wars, and then uh, Contra Hardcore. So seven unique games, but then it also has um, the Famicom version of Contra, uh, which is so much nicer than the US one, just the little details. Yeah, like you get the little you get graphic cut details, you get, get the little, little map, yeah. like, sort of like the, the Ghosts and Goblins S map, you see where you are. Yeah, you know. Cool. Um, and then they put in the European versions of Hardcore and uh, Alien Wars. A little bit different than the, the uh, different uh, Probotector. So it's uh, some different art. I feel bad if you grew up with Probotector Contra in Europe. I feel bad for you. I but just do. It's just less personality. They they did put a bunch of stuff in there, you know, for completionists. Um, Luigi's Mansion Three was shown off. Um, it looks good. It looks like Luigi's Mansion. That's late. That's gonna come out later this year. Yeah. <sighs> yes. And it, and it features Gooigi, the the green Slimer version of <laughs> Luigi, to help you as an assistant. Um, uh, that's gonna there's gonna be a four player co op mode. Yep, and it looks fun. And then obviously the Breath of the Wild sequel was announced. Um, the trailer is we're, great. we're missing some stuff, Ian, but okay, we're gonna get there. Uh, so so okay. those are the big ones, and I'm gonna go over the smaller stuff. There's gonna be smaller. But obviously, stuff. let's let's not just gl- gloss over Breath of the Wild oh, sequel. I'm, I'm let's not. The game I of was the year. just starting about it. I was just starting to talk. Um, what I liked about the trailer was um, uh, it was darker. It was spooky. It was Grimlord, uh, uh, Grimdark, <laughs> um, Grimdark, Edgelord. no, but it was just it was it was spooky. All right, so it's, it's Link and Zelda going into the castle. Through, you through see castle. There's there's Ganon energy castle. noodles coming at you. Energy noodles, energy, and noodles. then it starts to lift off the ground. Yeah, after you see a, a skull look at you and get so it's right, right Link eyes. and Zelda in space. Maybe I don't maybe. know. I don't know where they're going. This is what I'm going to say about it. And we talked about this. We said we said there was definitely going to be a Zelda sequel. Not that we're Nostradamus, Ian and I, in the podcast. No, it's but, it's it, it's but, worth saying that there's probably always a Zelda in the making. <laughs> but the reason we say that is because uh, Breath of the Wild was completed at least like three and a half years ago. It came out two years ago. It was supposed to come out three years ago on the Wii U. And since the Wii U was gasping for air, they said, Let, we're not going to come out with it. We're going to wait for this it to be a Switch launch title. So th- so they've been working on this game for probably at least a good two years. At least they've been working on this. Sure. I could I could probably tell you with confidence. So when this is, is going to come out, I don't know, maybe end of next year, maybe a couple of years from now. But, you know, they usually don't do... Nintendo usually doesn't like to say now in development because the last time this happened with Metroid Prime 4... They had to say, oops, we, we're starting from scratch. No Metroid Prime 4 mentioned, right? Oops, so all berries. So that's going to be probably a couple of years off still for Metroid Prime 4 uh, there. But um, the, what, what someone from Nintendo was quoting this saying this is a little bit darker than Majora's Mask. I've never played Majora's Mask. I'm, I'm not an N64 guy. So how dark is that compared to, to Breath of the Wild? Majora's Mask is... I mean, they're like chopping kids' heads off. And no, like, what it's you... just a darker storyline. I mean, you're constantly under the threat of apocalypse. But, but isn't that that was Breath of the Wild, though, wasn't it? Like, doesn't that get pretty dark? Yes, I'm just saying. Major, they're right. Majora's Mask is darker. So, do you think this will be In more? Tone, do you think this will be yeah. more of a you know a traditional procedural Zelda where you go to you know Dungeon One, Dungeon Two, less open world? I'd be surprised if they didn't have more like defined dungeons, but I don't know if they'll go back to a, a you know a more traditional structure. Uh, Nintendo seems to kind of not ever want to do do what's obvious well if they're lifting off in in the castle you think at least the the first chunk of the game might take place there and then they go i think it's gonna be space zelda i'm gonna say that <laughs> we had jason in space we're gonna and, and the Le- leprechaun in space we're gonna have zelda in space and what else unless it lifts off to another land like go back to Link's awakening island maybe maybe who knows huh conspiracy um animal crossing got some news uh, delayed, right? It's delayed until March 20th. They never had an official release date, but everyone thought it was going to come out this year. Um, they've delayed it to March 20th of uh, 2020. Um, as uh, Doug Bowser said, it was to um, alleviate crunch on employees so that they could have a decent holiday season. And quite frankly, that's Isn't very Nintendo respectable. Has Nintendo ever come out and said that directly before? That That's the reason why they delayed something for because of crunch? Uh, they talked about it. I, I don't it. think they've ever said directly we're delaying this because of crunch, but they've talked they about don't wanna, it. But Nintendo delays stuff usually, in, but they give you a good heads up about it. So, so the Animal Crossing looks good. It looks like it's going to... Uh, the big thing is it looks like it's <sighs> going to involve crafting. Um 
and you know really a, a much larger ability to uh, customize your village um, I'm super excited for it that's probably the game I'm most looking forward to right now okay um, we don't care about the Witcher 3 coming on there no. well I mean other stuff real quick Witcher 3 um, Banjo and Kazooie got Banjo and Kazooie got announced for Smash okay uh, which is pretty big um, so, so we, we were talking about that before on the phone in private and that does that potentially mean that there's going to be a new banjo game. I think that's one of the reasons why people are so excited. Is, I thought is, I saw is, people lose their fucking minds for this because like, more people, so than the other Smash characters. People love Banjo and Kazooie, um, and I think it was rumored that they were going to be in Smash. Like, uh, I think that was one of the rumors that was going around before it came out. So, uh, you know, people like to see that sort of thing come true. But it's a series that hasn't been in you know the public eye recently. The last one they did wasn't wasn't very well, good and wasn't like a Banjo Kazooie. I think it's people just seeing characters from their childhood. I mean, that was high school for us, but for a lot of people who are playing games right now, doing YouTube stuff, that was their childhood. Well, and now this is, I mean, now now Microsoft and Nintendo are almost like a, you know kissing cousins at this point. They're becoming. Sure. It just seems like now in the past year or so, they're really coming out and saying, yeah, we're, we're kind of you know we're cool. We're cool with each other. <laughs> While Sony's just, you know, watching from afar. Like, oh, I want to be invited to the party. It's too late. You should have kissed Nintendo first. Should have made that move on Nintendo. Would you would you imagine now if if that would... You think Nintendo would ever work with Sony in the same capacity to get a character in Smash? Or they're like, no, we don't need you. We're, um, we're I don't, I don't we're think they would. We're good. They can make their own well, Smash well, well, they get, What are they going to get that people would care about? The fucking clown from Twisted Metal? Who are they going to get? Kratos. Do you remember that, remember that awful... Uh, PlayStation All Stars Smash Brothers game. Oh yeah, I, I do. I remember playing that. I played that at E3, and I'm like, "Ooh, this is not good." Did anyone buy that game? Was that a big seller at Luna Video? Games? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it did sell for a while, uh, especially the Vita version, because I just think there was nothing else. Nothing else at the, the time. Uh -huh. um, wow. It just looked wholeheartedly unappealing. There's just no characters that are appealing. Like so, that, it's Sack Boy. Those. Yeah, Sack Boy. Good old Sack Boy. Horror, the horror Mario of, of the, the Sony franchise. Um, real quick about Marvel Ultimate Alliance three, just because that's going to be, I think, a, a, a not a big, huge game, but a, a decent sized seller uh, on the, on the Switch. Um, I'll just say that the character models. The, first of all, where's Hawkeye? Why can't you play Hawkeye? I think they confirmed he's in the game somewhere, but you can't play him. Hawkeye gets a short. Are you talking about Avengers or uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance three? Oh no! I mean Avengers. Sorry, not not uh, Ultimate yeah, Alliance. Yeah, Ultimate Avengers. Alliance three looks great. Uh, so with the Avengers one. Yeah. So the Avengers one, no Hawkeye, uh, which which Hawkeye for some reason gets short changed again, and uh, the the character models look look terrible on the Avengers. I just said when I looked at them, they looked kind of generic to me. They don't look like the the Hollywood actors, which I guess they didn't get the rights to. But they all look the same. Like I looked at uh, Black Thor looks incredibly like basic. Thor looks like Captain America with a bigger forehead, <laughs> but then Scarlet. Scarlet, uh, not Scarlet Widow. Black Widow looks like Captain America, but with red hair. Like they look, it looks so ultra generic to not let them resemble the actors. I mean, at all. Right. And so, <laughs> it was just funny to me. I'm not saying it's gonna be a good game or not. I have no idea. But I just thought that was hysterical to see that they looked nothing like it. You want to talk about Ultimate Alliance three or not? Uh, I mean, just briefly, it looked like it was gonna be good. It, it, it's it's another it's another one of the uh, dungeon. It, it's an entry in a. In the series, it's it's this a dungeon a children, crawler type uh, type game. It's a dungeon crawler. Yeah, it is. With the, this was the Children of Thanos one, right? So you have to fight up all. Yeah, them. but no, it is. They are dungeon crawlers. I mean, that's essentially what the games are. Um, you go through their action RPGs. You level up skill trees and stuff like that. Um, Elsa Bloodstone is shown off in it, who I loved, especially in Next Wave Agents of Hate. So it looks. Like, I have no idea who that is. Elsa Bloodstone. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to have some deeper cuts, which is pretty cool. Of characters. Yeah. Um, can you? Is Fantastic Four going to be in the game? Yes. So that means they're back. They're back, everyone. Yeah. It's going to be a movie at, in two at, years. At the like end I of, said. At the end of the trailer, it said. Uh, they're back. It said featuring characters from. Uh, X Men and and then it showed the Fantastic Four. They're right back, there. everybody. So they're back in they're back in the, in the Marvel fold. It's official. I'm happy. All right. So hey, what's left from Nintendo? We we got we got everything for them. Uh, I mean, we're missing stuff, but that, that I mean, Astral Chain looked great. Um, no More Heroes three look it looks is an actual sequel to No More Heroes. It looks fantastic as well. Uh, and no, that's about it. I'm sure we missed something, but there was a lot to cover with Nintendo. But you were impressed by, I think you mentioned to me that 
Nintendo's like like this mid generation. Yeah, pulling it. I had mentioned it in a text. Yeah. I think Nintendo is. I, I think one of the reasons why Nintendo looked so good this year, and and they have a lot of nice stuff on display, but I think it's heightened by the fact that Nintendo has now positioned themselves in a weird way, timing wise, that this is their this they're they're about to hit the peak of the Switch in terms of. It's been two years, so years it's, it, we're, we're, in, we're in middle age almost. We're in the middle age yeah. of the Switch. Um, you know, it, so they've got a lot of cool marquee shit to show, whereas Microsoft, you know, they had some... We'll get into that. They had some stuff, and, you know, Sony it didn't even show up. Um, you know, Square announced some good stuff, but it, it's at that point where for other other companies and other systems that are nearing the end of their lifespan, it's, it's getting dry. So Nintendo looked particularly flush. One thing that um, was interesting that the heavy rumors of, of these different Switch variants, no mention. Yeah, I think it was said before E3, though, to not expect to see it. So if it, I, it, it probably still going to happen. I, I would be shocked. That oh, I would be very shocked. It, Nintendo's, they did it last year. Um, you know, they, they do treat the E3 Direct as a little bit more special than most. But, still, but they will release things just as... They'll, hey. they'll announce things just as important next month during a Direct or whatever. So, I mean, they could announce it... They'll, they'll announce it later summer or fall. I figure they'll announce yeah. it in the summer in preparation for the fall. That's that's my guess. Get that get that Super Switch. Get that Super Switch so you're, so so when you play Witcher 3, your, your, your Joy-Cons don't melt in your hand from all the heat of processing that. All right, so uh, good on Nintendo. Looking forward to uh, to uh, some of the stuff. Uh, obviously, I think uh, the Breath of the Wild sequel will sell like gangbusters. Again, that'll solidify the solidify that ground that when Metroid Prime Four probably should have come out. They're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna have Breath of the Wild there. Well, if, if Nintendo times it right, Vonnie will never not be trying to finish. I was gonna say, the game. <laughs> think about Vonnie's personal life. <laughs> She just played a thousand hours. Give, give her some time off now. <laughs> All right, let her play. Maybe we'll play some Splatoon again. 